Greetings, Northbridge Church. My friend, uh, Bill Yusino asked if I would be willing to do an introduction to the Walk Like Jesus uh, study material. It's a part of the three-part Like Jesus initiative. I think probably the easiest way for me to do this would be to just kind of give you a little bit of the background of why we created this three-part series. For the last seven years, I worked part-time at a mega church in Louisville, Kentucky, a church with over 400 staff. And I spent seven years training them in about 12 days of content that we have on the life of Christ. We would gather in small groups of 12 to 15 at a time, and we dig into the scriptures, and we dig into a harmony of the gospels, and, and we would just study Jesus and his life. Well, in the course of that time, the, the real deep conviction came throughout the leadership of that church that we needed to move the whole congregation more toward a disciple-making strategy versus a come-and-see strategy. So then the question became, how then do we communicate this material to the average layperson in the congregation? And that was 30 to 50,000 people that were in and out of that church on a regular basis. So as we worked on this, we came up to the conclusion that there are three core truths that we wanted everybody in that congregation to be able to articulate very clearly. We wanted everybody to be able to define the mission of Jesus, the model of Jesus' life, and the methods he deployed in terms of making disciples. So that became the outline for this three-part series. The mission of Jesus being that disciple-making pathway, the four challenges, the four-chair book, which is my understanding you've already worked through. The second part of that was the very model of Jesus' life. How did Jesus do what Jesus did in his humanity? And the third part of this series is the methods of Jesus, where we look at the seven disciplines of a disciple-maker as seen in Jesus' own words in John chapter 17. You see, the mission of Jesus defines the big why God has left us here, and that why is to make disciples who can make disciples. It's taking those four chairs, moving people ultimately to the fruit, more fruit, and much fruit, the fourth chair where you have spiritual grandchildren. You made a disciple who makes a disciple, and your family of children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren spiritually begins to multiply. The, the model is, is this whole issue of walking like Jesus. And the model answers the question, how? How did Jesus do what Jesus did? How did he make disciples? And then the methods look at the what, what he specifically did in this process. 1 John 2, 6 tells us that if any of us claim to be in Christ, we must walk as Jesus walked. And it's interesting, if you study that verse, it's an imperative, it's a command, you must walk as Jesus walked. I, I've said many times, I'm convinced the key word in that verse of 1 John 2, 6 is the word as. And so as we wrestled with this, how do you walk as Jesus walked, out of that came this study that we've taught for close to 50 years, not in a written form, but all over the globe. We're now in 130 countries around the globe, and everyone has taken these six character qualities, the six foundational principles of Jesus' life, and are multiplying them in their own land. So let me give you a quick overview of the Walk Like Jesus study, because we really tried to answer the question, how did Jesus do what Jesus did in his humanity? Now, obviously, if you've been around me for very long at all, you'll know that I have a deep conviction because it was so transforming in my own life when I began to understand the full humanity of Jesus. Yes, Jesus was fully God. In him, the fullness of deity dwelt. But even more important than that, Jesus was fully human. This is the whole argument of Hebrews 2. If he was not fully human, then our salvation could not be fully complete. So Jesus added humanity to his deity, became flesh, dwelt among us. And then he said over 40 times, I want you to do what I've done, walk 
as I walked and follow the pattern I gave you. So in this study, we try to unpack how did Jesus do what Jesus did in his whole humanity? Yes, Jesus had the God card, but my premise is, and my conviction is, I've studied the text, is that Jesus did not do what he did by using the God card, because then he wouldn't have been fully human. Jesus did what he did through the power of the resources that God had provided to him and to you and I. That's why Jesus over 40 times could say, walk as I walked, because he was man as God intended man to be. He was that second Adam. So we develop a very simple acronym that we use around the globe where English is used, and it's the acronym Holy Spirit Power. And that acronym kind of captures our best take on what Jesus did to bear the type of fruit that he bore. First and foremost, he was Holy Spirit dependent. He was led by the Spirit, conceived by the Spirit, uh, raised by the Spirit, did miracles by the Spirit. As a matter of fact, Jesus in his own words said, everything I did, I did not do. The Spirit of God did him through me. So like Jesus, we have to be Holy Spirit dependent. And then the we spelled the acronym power, prayerfully guided. 45 times Jesus slipped away to pray. And we study the prayer life of Jesus. What would it be for us to pray like Jesus prayed? And then he, obedience is the, uh, the third one. Uh, Holy Spirit dependent, prayerfully guidance, obedience learned. Hebrews 5, 7 says, Jesus learned obedience through what he suffered. Now, if you're sinless, if you're perfect, how do you learn obedience? Well, that's a fascinating question. And we try to work through that in the life of Christ, because God wants us to build, like Jesus, our obedience muscles. Now, we often fail in obeying. Jesus never failed. He was without sin, but he had to grow his obedience muscles. My friend Bruce Ware, who teaches at taught it for years at Trinity Seminary, now at Southern Seminary, who's a master in terms of understanding the humanity of Jesus, said if, if Jesus would have went to the cross at the age of 20, he might not have been ready to say, not my will, thy will be done. Now, I don't know if I'd ever make that statement, but the, the conviction and the premise of what he's arguing is Jesus, in his humanity, had to grow his obedience muscles. He had to learn that obedience was fun and grow those obedience muscles. And it's the same with us. How do we teach our people to grow their obedience muscles? Fourth, he was word-centered. 84 times Jesus quoted from the Old Testament scripture, 70 different Old Testament chapters. Jesus did everything. He said, I must do this so that scripture might be fulfilled. How do we live word-centered lives? E, he always exalted the Father in everything he did. Always acknowledging his Father as a source of everything. In his humanity, Jesus said, I do nothing of my own initiative. And then in John 15, he said, oh, by the way, you two can do nothing apart from me. And then lastly, the six foundational priorities he was, R was re, uh, relationally centered, uh, relationships of love and integrity. He imparted his life relationally to his disciples because discipling is relational. So he was Holy Spirit dependent, prayerfully guidance, obedience learned, word-centered, exalted the Father and everything, and relationships of love and integrity. And we use that acronym, Holy Spirit Power, in a simple, transferable way to teach people how to walk as Jesus walked. And you know, the beautiful thing about this, in teaching this to people, and by the way, this becomes an excellent way to disciple new believers, because we tend to teach others what we've been taught. So at this mega church where I was working, we had trained all the staff in Holy Spirit power to walk as Jesus walked in that Holy Spirit power. And then we taught them how to help others walk as Jesus walked using that Holy Spirit power acronym. And it became a simple, practical way to disciple other people. And a simple, practical way, matter of fact, I'm of the conviction that if we don't walk as Jesus walked, we will never be able to make disciples. 
because disciple making is all about fruit bearing. And fruit bearing is a byproduct of walking as Jesus walked, of abiding in the vine. And it's the degree to which we walk as Jesus walked is the degree to which we as leaders and as a church are going to be able to make disciples the way Jesus did. So I love this study. And if I had time, I could take it to the beginning of Jesus' life and the end of Jesus' life and show these six foundational priorities. But our focus on writing this study manual was where the pastor could preach this material, the leaders could talk about it regularly, and the people could study it for themselves, digging into the scriptures with developing that conviction that I can walk as Jesus walked, and I can therefore do what Jesus did. So Northbridge, my prayer for you is you seek to to train your people in this common DNA, this common language of walking as Jesus walked, accomplishing the mission of making disciples, which is the, the why, the model of how we do this, looking at Jesus' own priorities, and then eventually getting to that third study, which is the methods to, to, to live like Jesus and the specifics of what Jesus did to make disciples. So my prayer is with you. and. Uh, Great to meet you via this videotape and trust that God will use you in this process as you seek to help your people understand the real Jesus of the scriptures.